And about photography, yes, for sure, there are many things to see. So in the beginning, people want to make some photos of the temple, for sure. But when we talk about the countryside, when we talk about the monasteries, when we talk about the architecture, when we talk about the floating village, uh, when we talk about the nature, people have said, yes, I would like to see. So we bring them to this kind of places and they enjoy it. Okay, so uh, so much on Mr. Uh, Remy Abbott. So uh, so you you have been living here and doing photography mm -hmm. in Simbri province and Cambodia, exactly. uh, to be exact, uh, for uh, quite some time mm -hmm. now. So uh, from your point of view, so you you have used photography since uh, as a hobby, then to a necessity, and then to a full time uh, job. So to your perspective, sir, uh, what does the photography hold the values of other moments. It's photography, it's super important for me. It's maybe one of the most lovely hobby because it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful hobby, photography. You can do everything. Uh, photography is very helpful to document places you've been, uh, to make some portraits also. Some people uh, Sadly, some people pass away, so it's nice to have some portraits and have some memory. Or some places are changing also, so it's nice to have kind of testimony about time changing. Uh, photography is also nice to break the ice in between people. You know, sometimes you feel a little bit shy and you don't dare to go toward people and to talk or just to smile. And when you handle a camera in your hand, it's easy. It's much more easier. You get a good excuse to meet people, to talk with them, uh, to push some doors you don't feel allowed, and to go to places you are not supposed to be. You get good excuse to be curious. Uh, it's a nice way also to motivate yourself. For example, sometimes when you feel a little bit lazy, and you say, oh, I don't want to go out, I want to stay home today. But when you think about photography, you said, okay, let's go out and let's try to make some photography. It's a good way also to catch some nice instants, to catch some moments. It's kind of quest, for example. When you go out with your camera, you, you have this kind of quest. You want to shoot some good image. You want to bring back some good shots once back home. So it's a kind of game. So everything and much more other things, other details, make photography like something very, very nice to do. It's, yeah, as I told you, it's a wonderful hobby. So you, you have sorted down in uh, Simbri province mm -hmm. in uh, 2013. Uh, so I, I bet you have been roaming around the city and other areas of uh, the country as well. But so what, what are, to you, what are the special aspects that you think still amused you uh, in terms of photography? There are so many things. It's endless because the city changed a lot. You know, uh, 2013, it's been maybe now 11 years. So in 11 years, you saw change, uh, CMI changing a lot because of world works, for example, because of uh, COVID time, because of new buildings, uh, because of tourism, many things change. So, it's always nice to go out and to spot things that change so and to document this kind of thing. For example, it was amazing to work in the street during how the road works for COVID time. It was great. Sorry, it's raining outside. It's okay. Yep, let's work a bit. Um, so Simrip is always like when you work in the street, you are sure to spot something interesting. That's what I like in Cambodia, you know, even when you take your motorbike and even when you go just to the market, you are doing maybe a few meters, but you are sure to see something amazing. There is every day for me something touching me, making me smile or uh, uh, making me the goosebumps or this kind of thing. When you, when you walk or when you ride along the river, you're going to see, I don't know, some fishermen, you're going to see some monks, you're going to see kids going out from school, you're going to see how the ID is going to the pagoda, and many things. You're going to see crazy shops or crazy people on, on the motorbikes with five or six persons on the same motorbike. Kids we're going to smile. Um, it's important also when you see someone, when you catch a smile and you smile back, 
and it makes your day. So that's why Simrip is an endless source of wandering. It's, it's always nice, every day. So, so almost it, it means that uh, when you want to do a photography, it, it doesn't have to be a stage photo or stage situation, no. but you mostly focus, not mostly, but mainly focus on the natural moments that you find it uh, engaging or attaching to uh, the emotions of people. Exactly, that's the most important for me. When you catch this kind of moments, it's, you are like a spy, for example, you are searching everything. Uh, that's also what I like in photography. When you just walk in the street and you handle your camera in your hand, or maybe just simply a smartphone, you feel aware about everything. You want to spot some details. Oh, your sense are kind of enhanced. You are, everything is boosted from a small detail here to a big landscape. You are aware about everything. So that's what I like in photography. And when you catch something interesting, in the street or in the marketplace or something like this, it's good to shoot and to say, okay, maybe I can catch this small instant and to freeze it and make it here for eternity. But I think it's, it still depends on individual perspective on those moments as well. Like, for example, uh, this, this photo behind you right here, it, I think it might be normal, uh, a common thing, a common moment that happens in a daily life for Cambodian people. Mm -hmm. But for you as a foreigner, it might be a uniqueness or like somehow. So to you, what, uh, what are the aspects that you think that are mostly overlooked by Cambodians but are attraction instead to foreigners? It's hard to say because you, basically when you are in this kind of spot, you, you don't really know what kind of photo you're gonna take. Uh, when you arrive here, for example, uh, so this photo is not mine, this photo uh, is from Alessandro, one of my colleagues, but when you arrive here, you are not supposed to see some monks. That's why it's great also about photography, because when you arrive somewhere, you can be surprised about something, and you can see unexpected things, and some strange things can happen. That's why it's interesting, it's never boring, because you just catch the instant and you deal with what you have just under your eyes. What do you feel when you see that moment to make you raise the camera and catch it? For example, let's take uh, this shot, for example. Uh, I was in Phnom Penh and you got this kind of very, very yellow and orange world like this. So you know basically you got a nice background. And luckily, there was a coffee shop on the other side of the street. So I could have a seat and just see what happened. And this part of the street was under the shade. So people passing with motorbike or with car or trucks were under the shade. And this part of the street were spotted by the lights. So basically, when you see this kind of settings, you know that something may happen. So you just have to have a seat to prepare the settings, to prepare the frame and just waiting for something to happen. And something for sure will happen. It can be right now or in five minutes or in one hour, you just have to wait a bit. But when you get a nice background, when you get this kind of light and shadow, you see maybe someone we're gonna walk or a truck we're gonna pass, this kind of thing. And yes, in fact, a monk started to walk here. I catch his look, so it's nice. And I get this guy, in this truck like a silhouette. So photography, sometimes you just have to prepare yourself and just to have a seat and be patient and waiting for something to happen. That's why it's magic. So, so it, it means that for, uh, to do photography, you have to be patient and uh, have uh, sharp eyes as well. Yeah. Always ready for any moment. That's it. But uh, for, for your work, uh, you, you can, we, we can say that it's a little bit abstract when it comes about photography and mm -hmm. art. Uh, about these photo, photos that you have captured, uh, uh, what assessment or what do other photographers feel about your photos? Have you, and have you received any like honest feedback about either the public or a fellow professional photographers? So it's sad to say, but one of the most important feedback, I'm not very into social network, but one good feedback is Instagram. When you post a photo, you can see the amounts of likes you get on the photo. And basically, 
Sometimes you think you got a super good shot, a wonderful one, and you get only a few likes. And sometimes for you, the photo is just so-so, and you get many comments, wow, this shot is amazing, people sharing the story and everything. So it's a good way. Making some exhibition also, it's something good, because you can have the feedback of other people. And you can see, uh, for example, when you sold your photo, you can see which photo uh, sold the most. And some photo, uh, never, some photo don't have any success. And some of them, basically have a lot of success. For example, just talking about my photography, you get this lady with the umbrella here, and encore what? This one is a huge success. And in contrary, this one with the monks, I was very proud of it, and for me it was a very good shot, but this one didn't sell at all. So sometimes it's very subjective. Sometimes you cannot say, that it's a good shot, or sometimes you think it's a good one, and finally not so much. So it's difficult, and you never can say it's going to be a good one, or it's going to be a bad one, so. So I think at the end, it depends on uh, individual perspective and how they see uh, the photo. But so another thing is, does every photo have a message behind it for us? Normally, a yes. Normally. A good photo usually stands by itself, and normally a good photo always have a message. Always. It may be just a funny message, maybe not something too serious, it may be funny, uh, it may be something much more important when it's talk about, much more about journalism and documentary photography, when you want to, uh, yeah, when you want to tell something, when you make kind of storytelling, for sure. But yeah, basically a good photo always have a message. It's just not a beautiful shot, but it's also a message. So uh, I think which, uh, which, which type of photography do you want? The one that gives off always message, mm -hmm. a message or the one that you think it depends on uh, the audience that whether they get the message or not? The message, you can, you can imagine the message by yourself. For example, uh, kind of photo, uh, we, we can have a look upstairs if you want. I, I'm yes, going to show you maybe upstairs. It will be, I got a few examples. So, for example, some photo you get the message, it's easy to read. For example, you get this sentence on the wall, whoever is happy, we make others happy too. And you get this guy enjoying life, they are smiling. So the message here, it's not difficult, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. I, uh, think, I think this one is like a, a stage photo because it's too coincident about it's it. It's not stage. <laughs> That's what it's it's wonderful to, to do photography because no, it's not stage and you get these two guys and tack and you take the shot. So this one, for example, yes, it was a message. Uh, it's obvious. For for example, um, yeah, we were talking about this one, you remember? Huh? This one there is a message also, but there are different meanings. And maybe you can spot the message by yourself. And maybe, in my opinion, there will be one message. And maybe, in your opinion, the message will be different. That's, that's why it's nice about photography. But how, how about in a Cambodian or a Cambodian context or in Simbia province in particular? So what kind of vibe does it give you when doing a photography, whether it's an abstract of uh, photos or any like uh, the moment that gives of uh, obvious message to mm -hmm. the audience for example like uh, this one and how about uh, that one so I think it's a little abstract that I I'm um, like I myself cannot uh, getting any idea of and the first thing that, uh, that that comes to my mind when I look at photo as trying to understand the emotion or the feeling that you were having when uh, taking that photo? For example, for me it was a good example to see that temple are still a living place. You got these two guys, it was at the end of the day. So these people just going back from work. They are workers, they are smoking a cigarette, uh, just uh, riding a Honda Cub, that is something very Cambodian. And you got the Bayon temple behind. So it means that the temples are not only a museum. It's also a place where people are working, they go back home at the end of the day. So for me, that's the message. But maybe when you're going to see this photo, we think about something else. 
who knows but uh, how about this one sir why, why did you decide to get it like black and white color sometimes it's just about the uh, artistic point of view for me it was working much more in black and white rather than in color um, because you see the shirts are white the sky is white so yes yeah, it, it looked better in black and white for me and it was the end of the day so same it was the same philosophy that the end of the day uh, school's out kids are going out uh, they go back home and there is Bayonne temple so it means that the temple are still a place where people go to school where people live and everything so that's why it was interesting for me to see that's not only a touristy place it's not only for tourists it's also for Cambodian people I, th I think uh uh, when when I look at that picture, the first thing that comes out to my mind is that, think, okay, this photo will never get old because it's only in black and white, and it says about the uh, uh, students, bikes, and the temple. So obviously, it will hold like a historical value or something. And I one see. more thing, sir, uh, I I have noticed that uh, most of your photos uh, capture the monks mm -hmm. and well, why did you decide to focus uh, a lot of moments it's, to the monks? I don't really decide but uh, you know monks are everywhere in Cambodia. Uh, there are some pagoda at each corner of the street, there are a lot of religious celebrations. When you go in the streets or in the morning you see monks working in the streets. Monks are everywhere. When you go to the temple, you see some monks also. You get some big gathering of monks for big celebration, like Mek Bocha or Vizak Bocha, for example. So, yeah, monks are everywhere. So it's difficult not to shoot monks when you are a photographer. Obviously, when you go out in Cambodia, you are sure to see some monks. So sometimes you say, oh no, monks, I already got plenty of photos of monks. But you shoot because, oh yeah, finally, it's beautiful. So, uh, uh, technically, you have been doing photography in Simbria for uh, a long time now, mm -hmm. let's say. But uh, which part of the province is your favorite to capture the moments uh, of about photos Simrip? for you? Oh, uh, there would be many, many things to say about Simrip. Uh, it's a pity because most of the time people don't stay too long in Simrip. Usually, people stay only a few days, they go to the temples. They don't stay too long, they just see Angkor Wat, Bayonne, Taprom, and after that, they go back home. And they should stay because there are so many things to see. So for sure, Siem Reap is amazing because Siem Reap is a good balance. It's not a big city, it's not too small, so it's not crowded and busy as Phnom Penh can be. It's not too small like Kempot or Kep, for example. So it's a good balance. You got the temples. So you take the motorbike and in five or ten minutes you are in the middle of the temples. Uh, it's close to countryside also. You ride ten minutes, you are in the middle of the rice fields. And the countryside is amazingly beautiful. So you get the floating village also. You go to Kampong Pluk, you go to Mekre, you go to many places that are really amazing. And Simrip is really beautiful province. I like it so much for the city, for the temples, for the countryside for the architecture, for the, uh, for the food, for uh, all the cultural life. When you go to Predak, for example, Predak is amazing. You got the noodle makers, you got uh, the small uh, numb knots, um, you got the people making baskets also, uh, rattan baskets, uh, you got the rice fields, you got the monasteries also all around. So you see, and Predak is maybe 10 minutes away from city center. So there is always something to see when you go to Bahai, so you go to West Bahai, you can just have a seat on the hammock and see people swimming and jumping in the water. You can just drink a coconut and chill out and have a book and see what happened. So we got many, many things to see in Siam. That's what I like. And anytime people say, I just say, uh, when people said I just stay two or three days only in Siam, I said, no, no, please stay more. There are so many things to see a lot. So, uh, Sim Reap is not only to heal, uh, you know, physically, emotionally, but also spiritually. Uh, we have uh, like what we call cultural richness, mm -hmm. like uh, cultures or traditions, uh, the food. We have uh, 
a place or more place that we for the business tourism. Mm -hmm. We have also sport tourism like a running marathon. Uh, we also have this uh, Afro uh, tourism, exactly. where a tourist can go to, uh, you know, the farm, like uh, the organic farm. Mm -hmm. And do you think that Siem Reap in particular is suitable or can be potential for photography tourism? In of course. So not only about photography, but uh, when people are traveling, you know, more and more they want to see something different. They want to go, uh, how to say, out of the beaten tracks. They want to see something different. They don't want only to see the temple. They want to have a special experience. So that's why, for example, agro agriculture or uh, this kind of trip is more and more demanded by people. People ask this kind of experience. And about photography, yes, for sure, there are many things to see. So. In the beginning, people want to make some photos of the temple, for sure. But when we talk about the countryside, when we talk about the monasteries, when we talk about the architecture, when we talk about the floating village, uh, when we talk about the nature, people have said, yes, I would like to see. So we bring them to this kind of places and they enjoy it. So throughout your works here, I, I think it is great then. It's more than temples for photography. Like, more like uh, we, we can focus on the, the daily moment, the rural, mm -hmm. and we experience the cultural experience that we can uh, gain in the agro-tourism or other aspects as well. But uh, to you as a foreigner, that you, you can have uh, the idea of uh, what other foreigners feel as well, when like what they want to get when it comes to uh, photography when they arrive here. So yeah, basically, yeah, as I told you, they just want to make, they got a small to-do list, you know, temples, monks also, because for them, it's Cambodia. But yeah, when we talk a little bit, I said, hey, you know, there are some floating village. Hey, you know, there is a nice white feed there. And here there is a place I make noodles. And here there is a place with a old lady making rattan baskets. And they are curious. They want to go and they want to see. And finally, they shoot a little bit about the temples and a lot about people and about the landscape and countryside and everything. But basically, yes, when they come, when they think about Cambodia, they think it's pitiful because when you think about Cambodia, most of the time people think about Khmer Rouge and the temples. That's all. And that's, that's important in the history of Cambodia, but that's not the only thing. There are so many other things to discover about the country. Cambodia doesn't summarize to Khmer Rouge and Angkor Wat. There are many, many other things about Cambodia. And we got maybe to say this to people because they are not aware about that. So basically, they said, okay, I go to a genocide museum, I go to Angkor Wat, and I know everything about Cambodia, but no, I don't know anything. So I still have to discover many, many things. So that's why we are here also to talk about that and to say, hey, pst, come on, and I will show you something special. And usually it's nice. So uh, when, when they, it's like uh, most tourists, like they don't have, uh, you know, a digital camera or professional camera for photography. Mm -hmm. Like they usually come here uh, with a, a phone. group of friends, yeah, yeah, a phone. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we have seen a lot of people doing like mobile photography. So, so do you think this will ruin the, like, the spirit of the real photography or do you think like, yeah, it, it, it should be encouraged? No, no, it's, it's, sure, sure it should be. You can make wonderful shots only with a phone, it's okay. Huh? The most important is not the camera, it's the way you think about photography. So the camera, you can use a very expensive camera. I get sometimes some guests who come here with with a big bag and a bunch of lenses and cameras, there are some thousand and dollars inside and it's crazy. And sometimes people just come with a cheap phone and it's all right and they make great shots also. That's, the camera is not important. So, so it, it basically, it's, it's not about trying to be professional or about perfection, but No, the most important is the look. That, that's all. Huh? So what you see, how you feel about it, it is more important. Right? That's it. So as you said earlier, that most people come here in Simri province in particular mm -hmm. uh, with image of temples. 
But how, uh, when they arrive here, they kind of change their perspective because of the Cambodian smiles. So I, I just want wondering what your perspective is about the uh, image of people here that they can get, whether it's in terms of photography or about uh, the tourism aspect. So the Cambodian smile, I just would like to talk a little bit about the Cambodian smile. Uh, in Western countries, most of the time, we don't dare to shoot portraits. Portraits, it's a little bit weird because people, when you ask them for a photography in Western countries, usually they disagree. Or they are a little bit suspicious. They say, why you want to take a photo of me and this kind of thing. Here in Cambodia, it's the contrary. In Cambodia, it's super easy to make some portraits. And a lot of people coming here, they don't dare to shoot because, say, oh, maybe I don't want to ask, I feel a little bit shy, and blah, blah, blah. But here it's wonderful, and that's a perfect country to make portraits of people. And this Cambodia smile is super important. For me, it's the most beautiful smile in the world, to be honest. Cambodia smile, it's, it's amazing. Every time I see someone smiling, it can be... Uh, elders or adults or kids, anytime someone's smiling, it's, it's so touching. And you smile back. So after a few days in Cambodia, you are smiling like a Cambodian. That's what I like, it's great. You become the same, you are smiling to everyone. That's great. And people really appreciate to be in this kind of country where people are smiling. There is no aggressivity, it's only it's only a good thing, a smile, when you see a smile or in the morning, when you wake up, you go out and someone is smiling to you at the street, okay, you know it's going to be a good day. So it's priceless. So yes, the Cambodian smile is the most beautiful smile of the world, for sure. I see. So uh, I have one last question. So, so we, we are here at your uh, gallery in uh, Kandar village. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you said it earlier that uh, the village itself has been uh, affected since uh, the COVID pandemic, so yeah. because mm. of uh, like, it has lost a lot of uh, visitors recently. Think. But it's it is recovering somehow. So what what is the uh, current situation of the village, and what are you hoping for? So I used to live around here before COVID, and yes, I remember a very trendy town with a lot of art galleries, bars, restaurants, uh, many many places. It was. It was a nice place here. But yeah, since COVID, a lot of shops had to close. It was a difficult time, but yeah, no step by step. You got this wonderful painter here, uh, Tamara. She is amazing. You got uh, Divo, that's a nice gallery also. You got the tribe. Tribe is a nice photo gallery. You got many good restaurants. You got Mama Shop. You got a good Japanese restaurant called Kamon. You got many nice places in the streets. So I hope so, step by step, it's going to raise and coming back to normal and with nice activity. It used to be a very trendy place. Since COVID, it's much more difficult, but we hope so, step by step, it's going to rise and coming back. So uh, given its uh, situation, uh, frankly speaking, so uh, why did you decide to open the gallery in here despite uh, the, the, the challenging and everything? It's much more thanks to my friends, to Regis and Alessandro. To be honest, just by myself, I would not dare to do this kind of thing because I'm not, uh, I'm not entrepreneurship. You know, I'm not into this. I'm not a businessman. But uh, we are three photographers. We still we are here uh, since maybe a long, long time. For me, it's eleven years. Regis and Alessandro, it's much more. I think fifteen years or something like that. They are shooting. We got plenty of photos about the same about Cambodia, about many places. And we wanted to show this kind of thing. We already made many exhibitions, but temporary exhibitions. And Regis and Alessandro just by, by, passed by the street and they saw this shop for rent. And they asked me, yes, why not going together and trying to do something? Just three of us and trying to display our work and see how it is. So that's why I decided to, to join them and say, okay, let's do it. But just by myself, I don't know if I would be um, brave enough to do this kind of thing. I'm not sure. So uh, how, how, how is it going? And how are you feeling about opening the gallery in, in this place? To be honest, it's quite new because we opened only two months ago. 
So we are thinking about many things. You know, the brain is nonstop. We send a lot of message during the work day. Hey, we should do this. Hey, guy, we should do that. So for sure, things are going to change. We're going to maybe change the display. We're going to uh, have a new project, maybe make some temporary exhibitions. Uh, we got many, many projects. So no, it's just the beginning, to be honest. And that's the best way to learn. For example, we're going to make some good things. We're going to make some mistakes. It's normal. Uh, so we hope it's going to be fine. We hope so. So uh, this, uh, amidst the recovery process, uh, what are the other challenges that you are facing right now and how are you coping with them? To attract more visitors, it would be nice. Uh, but it's low season. It's still low season. You know, the high season is going to uh, coming soon. So we hope to have maybe much more visitors. We hope so. Uh, and maybe to spread the name and maybe making some flyers and some name cards, also business cards, and to spread all you want, say maybe in the hotels or... So, yeah, we, we are still thinking about that, about the best way to, to communicate, maybe much more things on social networks, on Facebook or Instagram, and maybe making some events. So we are thinking hard about that. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much uh, for granting us the opportunity to talk to you about all the things. Uh. Thank you very much.